Hi, Keith here from North 40 Fly Shop. About four or five years ago, uh, fishing the Okanagan for smallmouth bass, I wasn't real happy with what I was using and I decided to come up with something a little bit more uh, realistic that was in the water. Unfortunately, in the springtime, you know, May, June, and the latter part of, or the early part of July, we have an outgoing migration of the salmon and sockeye smoke and the smallmouth do feed on them. So I, need, I decided to tie something that would mimic uh, the coloration um, and just the, the general look of the smokes. Um, and so that's how I came up with this, this particular streamer pattern, which I ended up calling the Zolt, just because of what we were using. Um, it's been really productive. Uh, I tie it a number of different sizes, um, not just in the original color, which is chinchilla, but I tie it up in uh, colors such as the, the yellow, which is very productive. And then I've downsized it to with the olive. I've got another pattern that's kind of more of a fire tiger, um, just a few different colors that works not just for bass, but I've also had good luck with it for trout in our, the streams and the area lakes and stuff. So we'll get started with this in just a second. So here's a little more close-up look of, of this particular uh, fly. Like I said, it, uh, I tie it up in different colors such as the yellow and the olive and white. So um, you'll notice that it has eyes on it and I'm a big fan of eyes when it comes to streamers. So we're going to use a Gamagatsu B10S stinger hook and we're going to do it in a size 2. Uh, which is what I usually use for bass. Get that in there. We're going to use um, Ultra Thread in the uh, 140 in white, and we're going to come back. When uh, I say eye length, I'm talking about the eyes that I'm putting on there. So there, these are I think quarter inch. Uh, yeah, quarter inch oval eyes. So I'm going to come back about quarter inch off the the uh, hook eye and put my thread down. And we're going to take this all the way back to the bend of the hook. About there. The little trick I picked up a few years later um, and that was uh, putting a mono loop so to speak in the back. And that was to help keep the uh, rabbit strip from wrapping around the bend of the hook. So we're going to take that and we'll put that in on the far side. Get that secured in there real good. And then we're going to loop that around. What this does, it'll give a platform for the uh, zonker strip of rabbit to sit on. And that's about, so you're doing about a, maybe a three quarter inch, a little less than a three quarter inch length of, of a loop there. Tie that in. Snip that extra off. And then we're going to come in underneath. And that's just to kind of prop that loop up a little bit more. This is something that I saw that used uh, a lot in the saltwater flies. And then we're going to <clears throat> add just a little bit of super glue here just to give it some strength so it doesn't come apart and get pulled out. So the next material we're going to add is some uh, larva lace. This is the angel hair, pearl, uh, green. So just a, a number of strands, 
I usually pull it out, double it over. This is just to add a little underbelly flash to it. So, tie that on top, like so. Spread it out a little bit, get that lashed in real good. And then we're gonna come back and, well, we're gonna do about at least a hook length and maybe about a half more. Turn that off. Straighten up any wild fibers. There we go. So the next, <clears throat> which will be the main part, is zonker strip, and this is chinchilla. This is the color that I thought best represented the uh, smoke coloration. Okay, for the overall length, what we're going to do is usually I'm going to go the full leather length of the of the hook like this, and then kind of part the hair. Give me a tie-in point, lay it on top. And we're going to lash that down. And since we're, that's why I'm using the 140 just for a little bit more strength. Pull that down. I do about four, sometimes five wraps. And then we'll go up in the front. And then I'm not going to trim that off until I get ready to bring it all the way back. So, so the body material is going to be some. Uh, UV Estes in the pearl. Pull out a few fibers, get it in a tie-in point. We're going to tie that in right tight up against that. And we're just going to then advance our thread all the way up to where we started. Right there. So I'm going to take nice tight wraps and kind of brush the fibers to the rear wrap this on here I'm doing it real tight putting a little bit of tension on here over the top, a couple in front, cut off the extra, pull everything to the rear, and wrap that up there. Well now that we got that wrapped, we're going to take our zonker strip, we're going to pull that back forward, and kind of part the hair to give us a tie-in point. Pull it tight. Like that. Pinch that off. Put that thing in there. And we'll cut off the excess here. There we go. And we'll just kind of give these a few extra wraps, kind of get it cleaned up a little. Pull it back a little bit, like that. There we go. Now we're going to flip that upside down. So the next thing we're going to do is the, uh, the belly, which is going to be, um, it's the uh, Spirit River UV2 White Marabou. And we'll find ourselves a good fluffy piece 
It'll work. I'll go through and get rid of the stuff I don't want. And I'm just going to strip off some stuff here. There we go. So we're going to want this, oh, about where it goes back past the uh, bend of the hook. And we'll just get that tied in underneath there. There we go. Turn that back upright. A couple good hard wraps. Make sure everything's lining up right. So, next step is we're going to add some Opal uh, lateral, uh, what is that? <laughs> lateral scale flash of material. And put that pretty much the full length. And we're going to tie that in right along the side. So usually I kick it flat like this, it makes it easier. So flip it over the other way. Do the same thing on this side. Pull it back. Go. Trim it off about the equal links. Like that. A little flash never hurts anything. So the next will be the um, I don't know if you want to call it the gill or um, whatever it might be, but I've always I, I like to put a little red in everything if I can. So I'm going to take some uh, ice dub and red. Take a clump about like that. Turn this on its side. And I'm only going to tie that in so it's only about, oh, maybe a quarter inch going back. So we're going to a couple of wraps for right now. Get that in there secured. other side. Yep. Get a new piece. There we go. Again, lay that on top right there. Gonna hold it with one finger. Get a couple good wraps to start it. Get it held in place. There we go. Cut off the excess. Doesn't have to be exact. If you've got extra fibers leading back, that's okay. It you know that red, you know it can be used. Um, it just I don't know. It just gets their attention. At least I think. done pull everything back now we're just going to clean up the head the tying part is pretty much done clean this up a little bit there we go get a whip finish in there we'll probably do a couple of them just for strength thread. There we go. Trim off a little bit there, get it all cleaned up looking pretty. Alright, so the next step will be the eyes. Okay, so now we're going to do the eyes. First thing I'll do is kind of give that up, a little flattened out in there. It just helps the eyes sit better. There we go. So the eyes are going to be uh, the hairline quarter inch opal uh, 3D eyes so normally I put a little super glue on there but with these ones you don't have to 
they've got a really good sticky back to them. So, gotta situate that where it looks good. Oopsie, make sure she's all even all the way around. There we go. Now comes the fun part. So, for the most of the time on these smaller eyes and stuff, I just use the UV uh, thin uh, resin. Uh, yeah. So, so, we'll start with the top. Give her a shot in there, just to kind of set everything from the top side. Flip it to the, to the bottom. And then we just start kind of filling in and then you pretty much what you want to do is just get your UV resin to about the top of the eyes. Oops. Just work it around. You don't want to build it up too big, you just want to kind of encase it. Hit the sides over the eye. It'll put a thin coating over the eye so it'll lock them into place. Anytime you're using UV resin, just take your time, work it around. I found that using a little bit at a time saves problems. Okay, got it all done. About the only other step I do is you got two two options. You can use the uh, Loon Flow to put a coating over that. I, just for own personal reasons, I like to use the Hardest Hulls Penetrator, and I just give it a light brushing on there and it'll dry up real good in the, uh, about 15 minutes all right so pretty much we're done real simple fly uh, and that was one of the reasons I tied it the way I did was I didn't want anything too complicated uh, but I wanted eyes I don't know for some reason eyes always seem to get a lot more attention one other little trick on these type patterns um, there's a product uh, put out by high and dry high and dry excuse me it's a powder floatant with an applicator brush um, this stuff there's a, I'll tell you a little trick this was taught to me by uh, um, one of the fly club members over in the Met where I live on his leech patterns and his nymph patterns, and I tried it just I had a thought. I tried it in the body with the applicator brush, and I mean just coated inside into some of the, uh, the hairs and everything else. It puts out a line of bubbles that the fish 
key in on. It's amazing. Uh, so it's a little trick to think about that if you're not doing real good, brush and brush this stuff in really good. Um, there it is right there. So brush that stuff in real good and get it down into, into the fibers, uh, mainly on the body and a little bit into the hair. Um, I know it's a floatant, but it's not going to affect, um, it, this, this fly still sinks down. That was the other thing is I don't use weight um, on a lot of my flies. Uh, I run shorter leaders along with sink tips or a full sinking line. I get more action out of an unweighted fly. And the other thing that I've learned is that when you're stripping a fly of this nature, uh, same like with my Minro and some of the other ones, uh, if you get a hit, especially with trout, if you get a hit and it does not hook up, stop. Just don't do anything. Just let that fish, that uh, fly, that little minnow pattern sit there and start to sink. It'll kind of quiver down. There's a, about eight, to, eight out of ten times the fish comes back around and he grabs it. He thinks he's stunned it, so he's going to come back and grab it. So, little fishing tip there for you. Uh, this is real good for bass, like I said, but also with the different colors that you can tie up. Um, trout love it too. Good luck out there.